Hey guys, welcome back to the second half of the new season of My Life as a Rallyist. Last time, I was in New Zealand following a GT3 Cup car through a Targa rally. Well, from New Zealand, I'm moving to Ecuador to explore a rally culture on the other side of the Southern Hemisphere. I flew into Ecuador to meet up with my girlfriend, Sherry, who was backpacking in the region for a few months. We had a few weeks of hiking and hostel hopping planned, and as a bonus, we'd spectate the Rally of Latacunga, a small regional rally event two hours south of Quito. Sherry and I grabbed a taxi into Quito city center. Quito's energy cured any jet lag I had, and I was excited to be spending my first hours in South America. Ecuador is a super diverse place, thanks mostly to huge changes in elevation. Quito sits in the middle of the Andes mountain range at 9,300 feet, making it the highest city in the world with a population over 2 million. I found the first examples of Ecuadorian car culture in the blinged out taxis. Nissan Sentras are the taxi of choice, and the cool kids' taxis had downforce. It's so pimped. It's a taxi with a wing and chrome mud flaps. I was told Ecuadorians love their rallying, but so far, the only thing rally related I found was a knockoff pair of Ken Block sunglasses. I was eager to find the rallyists out here, but in order to do that, we had to get out of Quito, so we rented a Chevy Spark. The Chevy Spark is everywhere in Ecuador. It's the Econa box of choice with three cylinders of fury, a cheap plasticky interior, and s -Tech, whatever the f that means. We nicknamed ours Sparky, loaded him up, and drove out of the city. Sparky was our chariot to freedom. He took us to villages and hiking trails. Look at a hairpin. Yeah, drive that <laughs> Finally, he landed us at the base of a crater. This is Pulalawa, a dormant volcano with a small village in it. I'd say top five most beautiful spots I've ever seen, as long as you see it before the fog rolls in every afternoon. There's plenty of hiking trails to explore. But Pulalawa is also home to some amazing gravel roads, and Sparky wanted to try them out. We're gonna go drive and find some of the craziest roads we can. We're gonna go play. It's beautiful. Apparently in 2012, there was a rally here. To have a rally in a volcano, I mean, it just doesn't get any crazier than that. When you have a tiny little three-cylinder Chevy Spark and a knee brake, you can have a ton of fun. And ripping down through here, flick, car rotates okay for a little squatty thing. Just kind of navigating, trying not to hit the oil pan. We don't have a skid plate in our rental car. And all around you is just edges of a crater, which is unbelievable. All right, e-brake. <laughs> that was fun. So at the base of this crater is about 10 kilometers of gravel road, but the real gem was the 14 kilometer hill climb that left the crater and took you to the top. If they haven't raced a hill climb up here yet, they should. Um, I think it's 14 kilometers straight up, zigzaggy. You can see there's like foggy crater mountains and probably about 30 hairpins. Our little Chevy Spark can't show you how to properly get up the hairpins because it doesn't really have any power. But, I mean, we're in second gear and we're kind of doing okay. But man, I would love to drive this on a proper rally car. Woo! Each road has really nice washy camber too. You can see as we make our way to the top, just every road has this twisty, bendy, feel to it, and if you had a car with some decent hill climb power, you would be smiling ear to ear. Just like New Zealand, if you fall off the edge, you really fall off the edge. 
Um, there is some pushes, which gives you a false sense of security, but I mean, there is no, there is no guardrail. <laughs> That's for sure. Holy f <laughs> That is insane. There's, there's, to give you an idea of how big this drop is, there's the window, there's the ground. From Pululawa, we drove to Chuchilon to stay at an eco-lodge called the Black Sheep Inn. As we got further into the mountains, we explored some side roads. Occasionally, we'd run into obstacles a dump truck left behind. The road from Kilatoa to Chuchilon, however, is the smoothest pavement I've ever seen winding through the mountains. It's a road built entirely from community help, and as Black Sheep Inn manager Edmundo Vega explains, it was something the communities out here desperately needed. The people come to here, now we have doctors, now we have ambulance, so now we have electricity, now you have internet here. When I was boy here, nothing, just trails. This is one of the best roads I've ever driven on. Yeah. Like literally, like there, this car is not shaking at all. So we're in the car and I'm just sitting there and pretending I'm a little race car and the spark making squealing tire noises with my mouth. Oh, sheeps on the roads, sheeps on the roads, sheeps on the roads. The road is so smooth and wide you can race a Formula One car down it. As long as you've kept an eye out for the occasional suicidal dog. Oh, Saved him. That wow. just cleared the dog. It was like a cone. The dog was like a cone. And I didn't hit it. So we get to the most like barren place on the road and we're climbing up the hill and you can kind of make out a little kid in the distance. So I kind of look over at Sherry and I was like, should we pick this kid up? And he's like, yeah, whatever, why not? Hola, hola. Yo me llamo Christian. Christian? Si, Sherry. Mucho gusto. Mucho. Oh, Ryan. We kind of assumed that he just wanted to get to the top of the hill. Well, lesson learned, uh, he was kind of just like after our food or after something. We took him to the top of the hill and he was all about the camera. He wanted to take pictures with us, which was kind of funny. That's good, eh? Very good. <laughs> and we got him to the top of the hill and I think we just confused him. Okay. Okay. Adios. So yeah, you know, pick up a kid randomly when you're the foreigners in the country and you can't speak their language and you're just like, yeah, this is pretty harmless, right? Uh, well, luckily it pretty much was, but <laughs> it was an experience. We made our way through the winding roads, finally arriving at the Black Sheep Inn. <clears throat> Nestled in the Andes, the Black Sheep Inn operates at a different speed. Sherry and I spent a few days unplugged from the rest of the world, soaking up the mountain life. Here we are on top of the world. Then come Sunday morning, we woke early and drove down to Latacunga for the start of the rally. Honestly, I have absolutely no clue what to expect. This is probably gonna be really small. As we arrived at rally registration, I was pleasantly surprised by the variety of cars and the amount of competitors. Ecuadorians mean business when it comes to rallying, and they'll rally anything. A lot of the field consisted of front-wheel drive hatches, but there was a fully prepped Evo, trucks, buggies, and UTVs as well. I had one connection to help Sherry and I get around the rally. My friend Santiago Albin, a Rally America co-driver, just so happened to fly down from the States to compete back in his home country this weekend. I've always been a fan of rally racing. Ever since I was a little kid, I used to go out with the roads with my dad. He used to wake up early in the morning just to go to good places to see the races. Fell in love with it. I'm a co-driver this time for my friend, Marco Antonio Vega, and this is a Suzuki Swift, AKA the Forza 2. It's a 1.6 engine with still carburetors on it. We're gonna do two stages of about 40 kilometers each Two passes the same one, and we have a super special that about that's going to be two kilometers for that race. 
Santiago was eager to show me around the paddock. And then he hooked us up with a popular photographer who guided us to the good spectating spots. We met up with Santiago um, and he hooked us up with this guy here and a equally small Chevy Spark. So we were following him and he's gonna apparently show us to some stages, which is quite lucky because I literally would have no idea how to get there. The first location we were brought to was a square left-hander, lined with spectators on both ends. My favorite spectator was this little boy wearing a Subaru World Rally Team fire suit. Vendors were selling food, and the rally cars were covering us in dirt. And there's the Evo. <laughs> you get it? Yep. Woo! We cheered on the buggies, hot hatches, and Suzuki Vitaras as they passed. The dust was absolutely killer. But that wasn't stopping us from wanting to see more stages. We're on the rally stage right now. I think he's gonna take us to a jump. So the second location we got to was like a 400 flat straightaway to like three crests and a jump. And we're all sitting on the stages lined up, people are watching, and you could see the first cars coming down the hill. And it looked like Finland. It looked like a section of Finland with different flora and fauna, really. Some cars were pushing pretty hard through it. And I was really impressed by the UTV driver. As I observed the race and the enthusiasts surrounding me, I realized that I may be on the total other side of the world, unable to communicate well with the locals. But when the crowds line the stages and there's a sound of a rally car in the distance quickly approaching a jump, we were all speaking one universal language. Ecuador was filled with amazing rally energy and getting to share that energy and this amazing landscape with Sherry makes this rallying tale a love story. I heard that the last event you had a mechanical failure with your gearbox. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do to alleviate those issues for this event? I just ran it into the ground. Did you? Yeah. yeah. So, so. <laughs> I hooked it up on the edge. Next time, I'm flying back to New Jersey to see if I can take some rally skills to the drift track.